Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite stars. It's been in the popular science news press a lot over the last few months. It is the star Betelgeuse. So for those of you who don't know what Betelgeuse is, it is the left shoulder of the constellation Orion. It is a red supergiant nearing the end of its life and we're trying to figure out when it's going to explode. So Betelgeuse has done something really funky over the last few months. In December, it started dimming a lot to the point that it was about 35% of its normal brightness, which is wild. You can actually see that with the naked eye. And then it started rebrightening right on schedule in February. So this has been really wild for astronomers and for people who don't do astronomy at all to see one of sort of the familiar stars do some really weird stuff that we can see from Earth with the naked eye. Theories have swirled around about what's going on with this star. Could it be about to explode as a supernova? So today I'm going to talk about what's happening with Betelgeuse and whether we think it's going to explode anytime soon. The answer, I'm not going to make you watch the whole video to get the answer, is that it's probably not going to explode anytime soon. But that said, there's some really amazing physics going on with that star that we can actually see from Earth, which is so cool. So let's kind of recap what happened with this star. So Betelgeuse started dimming in December, and then it started rebrightening in February right on schedule. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means, but we actually were able to predict that rebrightening. So the first thing to know about Betelgeuse is that it undergoes pulsations for a variety of reasons. Number one is that Betelgeuse is a semi-variable star. Semi-variable stars experience pulsations on a periodic way, where basically we can predict when the next pulsation is going to hit. And a pulsation is when the star expands and gets brighter and then contracts and gets dimmer. So reason number two that Betelgeuse pulsates is that it has convection, which are these regions of density and temperature inversions within the star that can actually create spots on the surface of the star um, that we would see with telescopes and potentially with the naked eye if they're big enough. So these convection regions arise from temperature and density inversions, like I just said, and we're most familiar with them because our sun exhibits them. If you've ever heard of sunspots, these are those convective cells on the surface of the star. And when we talk about other stars that have sunspots, we call them star spots because astronomers are really clever. It's, yeah. Okay, anyway, so reason number three why Betelgeuse pulsates is that it may experience what I like to call stellar burping. Yes, you heard me right. Stars, especially really, really big ones that are nearing the ends of their lives, burp, and we can maybe see it. So stars that are about to explode and about is on an astronomical time scale of about 100,000 years or so, experience episodic mass loss, which is basically the surface of the star can get torn off due to enhanced winds, due to, due to a lot of rotation, due to convection and turbulence within the star. And it reaches the surface and literally burps up surface of star. So could that be the answer to why Betelgeuse dimmed and then rebrightened? So Betelgeuse has what's called a light curve, which is basically a plot that plots the brightness over time. And from that light curve, we can see that it dimmed and then, sorry, that it got brighter and then dimmed. But we can also see that there are pulsational periods. And we can basically use math to extract those pulsational periods and tell us when they occur. So when we did that, we found that there are two pulsational modes that are really, really prominent in Betelgeuse. One occurs every 425 days or so, and the other one is about every six years. And here's the cool thing. If we actually add those periods together, which is called convolving in math language, we get a period that would have predicted that Betelgeuse would have a minimum brightness around February 14th through February 28th. 
And that's exactly what we found. Beetlejuice dimmed at its most around February 25th or so, and then it started rebrightening and has continued to rebrighten ever since. So that's really cool. We can actually predict what these massive stars do. How cool is that? Okay, so what could have actually caused that dimming? Well, we don't think it's convective cells because there wasn't enough temperature inversions in that star um, to actually cause big enough uh, convective cells. So astronomers at UW, which is University of Washington, led by the amazing Emily Levesque, were able to measure the temperature of various regions of Betelgeuse and found that Betelgeuse only dimmed about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. It only cooled about 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not that much when the star is about 5,500 degrees Fahrenheit. So we don't think that convective cells are the answer to this dimming problem. So could it be stellar burping? And the answer is yes, we do think it's stellar burping. So this episodic mass loss likely burped out a huge dust cloud that is obscuring the star and the light that Betelgeuse is emitting is basically getting absorbed by the dust cloud, but not yet getting re-emitted and seen from observers on Earth. So is there evidence for this dust cloud? And the answer is yes. Astronomers led by Emily Levesque actually found evidence of what's called gray dust. And gray just means that it is uniformly absorbed across all of the spectrum. And that's what we would expect from red supergiant stars like Betelgeuse. So what's happening with Betelgeuse now? We've determined that it's probably not going to explode anytime soon. This is just some cool activity that happens before it explodes. Well, we think that it'll explode in about 100,000 years or so. That's kind of what our models are telling us. Um, I'll put some of the studies in the description for this video if you're curious. But if you were to look outside tonight, what would Betelgeuse look like? Well, it looks to be about 92% of its normal brightness which is amazing. It's basically back to normal. So you can see this bright red shoulder of Orion, just like you would normally be able to see before it burped. Um, so please let me know if you're able to go outside, find Betelgeuse and see it in the comments below. And I'm super looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will be talking more about Betelgeuse and about astronomy in the coming weeks. Thank you so much for joining.